Perhaps the most startling thing that I can share with you is that all of the conspiracy theories that you've ever heard about one world government, about the UN takeover of the world, all of those conspiracies have now been laid to rest. There's nothing conspiratorial about it. It's all published. If you live in the heartland of America, you have to listen up. While the nation was distracted with the Anthony Weiner drama, President Obama signed an executive order that will seize greater power over food, fiber, and energy in our vast countryside area. It was during that study in which I began to realize that this was not an effort to protect the environment, but an effort to control you and I. The world is going more and more deeply into a general breakdown crisis, which would probably result in the elimination, within a generation or two, of two-thirds of the present level of the world's population. <laughs> the UN-funded Commission on Global Governance began meeting in 1992 in earnest and met for four years and last fall released their final report. It is entitled, Our Global Neighborhood. Few of the things that they wish to do. Create a world standing army under the day-to-day -day command of, who else? The UN Secretary General. They recommend the creation of a new economic security council into which the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the United Nations Development Program, and the World Trade Organization would all be consolidated. A unified worldwide banking scheme, currency. I have been challenged on the radio and in audiences like this, Mr. Lamb, there's no such thing as a global agenda. Hey, friend. You're absolutely wrong. Here it is. It's called Agenda 21. If you live in the heartland of America, you have to listen up. While the nation was distracted with the Anthony Weiner drama, President Obama signed an executive order that will seize greater power over food, fiber, and energy in our vast countryside areas. The president created the White House Rural Council to, quote, make sure we're working across government to strengthen rural communities and promote economic growth. Sounds great, but get this. The council involves a long list of the most powerful people in America. Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner, the Defense Secretary's on it, Attorney General Eric Holder, even the head of Homeland Security, Janet Napolitano. Why would Homeland Security be involved in exerting power and influence over the heartland? Why would the Defense Department be involved in promoting economic growth? The plan calls for the federal government to control almost every aspect of rural America. It will also, quote, identify and facilitate economic opportunities associated with energy development, outdoor recreation, and other conservation-related activities. Really? When did hunting and fishing become associated with conservation-related activities? And by the way, what does that mean? The aims of the rural White House Rural Development Plan sound eerily similar to a UN plan called Agenda 21, where a central planning agency would be responsible for oversight into all areas of our lives, a one world order. Sound familiar? Agenda 21, the primary document presented in Rio de Janeiro and adopted by more than 100 heads of state, including George Bush, which lays out in intricate detail all of the transformation that must take place in society in order for it to become sustainable as they define sustainability. The Conference of the Parties held its first meeting in Nassau last December. At that first meeting, the United Nations Environment Program presented them with A global biodiversity assessment <laughs> started in 1992 with a grant from the Global Environment Facility for 3.3 million dollars 
orchestrated and coordinated by the World Resources Institute and the World Wildlife Fund and the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. This is 1140 pages that explains how to implement the 16-page treaty on biodiversity. <laughs> the last 200 pages, section 13, deals specifically with a system of protected areas. It defines what a system of protected areas is. It includes core wilderness areas surrounded by buffer zones, similar to those used in the biosphere reserves, created under a UNESCO program and promoted by the United States Man in the Biosphere program. There are 382 biosphere reserves around the world 47 of which are in the United States, not under authority of any treaty, but by voluntary agreement with the United Nations. These biosphere reserves are to be the nucleus for the core wilderness areas. Scratching my head here, what on earth is going on? Joining me now is radio host Ben Ferguson. Hey, Ben, uh, President Reagan, 50 years ago, he started talking about this. And look what we got now. We have a White House Rural Council. Are you nervous about this? Sure. And anybody that's in rural America should be worried about this. Because what they're saying is, is we're going to look at what you're doing in your life. And if we seem that you're, uh, that you're not somehow using your land to the advantage of the overall American people, then we may have some, quote unquote, maybe strong suggestions for you. I mean, look at the people in Minot, North Dakota, for example, this week, who are having to deal with the government. And guess what? They didn't do it right with the levees there. So even when there's a place with a lot of people, they say, hey, why would I want the government telling me what to do with my farmland? Because that area there is massively involved with farm. Where are they going to walk in with the defense secretary and start telling them where they should farm, how they should farm, and what they should do with their land? I mean, this to me right. scares me. And then I stumbled on page 993. And friends, if you don't think that's a heavy reading at night. <laughs> page 993, after describing these protected areas, sums it all up by saying, the recently published Wildlands Project in the United States is the central theme of protected areas. And on page 15 of the Wildlands Project, Dr. Reed Noss says that we must convert at least 50% of the land area of North America to wilderness, off limits to human beings. Go ahead, Chris Plant. You're up. Well, yeah, who knows how it's going to turn out, but it's good. It's real good. This is another demonstration of this administration's obsessive, compulsive government disorder. They've decided that government needs to seep in. And it's not just, you shouldn't just be worried if you're in the heartland. We should all be worried about this. This is government out of control. This is crazy. This is over the top. This is one of hundreds of sort of organizations and commissions and panels that this administration has created to wheedle their way into our lives. And what kind of light bulbs we can use and how much broccoli we can eat and what we can drive and what our kids have to eat at school. And they're just right, seeking right. to control Tony, every sir, area of our lives. certainly feels like overreach to me. Not only overreach, right. Eric, I mean, it's so frightening. This is 16% of America, mm -hmm. what's considered rural America, who basically is now going to have its entire livelihood run by government in Washington. Right. They're far away right. from Washington. They like it that way, is my uh, guess. I think Mr. Ferguson certainly sounds like Go ahead, Benny, he's representing that point of view. Those core wilderness areas are to be interconnected by wilderness corridors off limits to human beings. Those wilderness areas are to be surrounded by buffer zones that may have limited resource use under the supervision and permitting of the federal government in collaboration with non-government organizations. Human population is to be resettled into the remaining 25% of the land 
into communities that are described as sustainable communities. As more and more of many among you had learned since the announcement I delivered in an international webcast on July 25th, 2007, that we have been not in a recession, not in a mere depression, but in a general global breakdown crisis of the economy of the entire planet. As long as the present structure of economy in the United States, in Europe and elsewhere continues, the world is going more and more deeply into a general breakdown crisis which would probably result in the elimination within a generation or two of two-thirds of the present level of the world's population. A reduction of the population of the planet from 6.5 to 6.7 billion people today to less than 2 billion in a short period of time. Entire cultures and entire languages and entire nations would disappear. Now let me put a parenthesis right here for a moment. He created what he called a White House Task Force on Ecosystem Management. He called 20 federal departments together and said, you will create an ecosystem management policy and you will implement the ecosystem management policy throughout the federal government. Department of Interior, Department of Agriculture, Department of Commerce, Department of Education, throughout the federal government. They developed what they called multimedia enforcement. Where they run into a problem with a community that will not accept this ecosystem management concept Multimedia enforcement means that all 20 federal agencies descend on the community and begin inspections and writing tickets. It, it, I couldn't believe it. You have the rewilding of America in the, in the Wildlands Project, the Convention on Biological Diversity, which is to control our rural population. Toll roads on interstate highways nationwide are walling off exit ramps to small towns and rural communities and are creating ghost towns by design. And Mikhail Gorbachev and Stephen Rockefeller and Marie Strong have written a new Ten Commandments for the World. It's called the Earth Charter. You can get it off the internet or you can contact us. We'll be glad to get you a free chart, copy of it. And there they're, of course, talking about how they, they're going to redistribute the wealth not only within nations, but between nations. Equitable distribution of wealth within nations, between nations. Equitable distribution of wealth oh, within nations, that's communism. And between nations, well, of course, that's the master plan. That's why we're shipping our jobs overseas. That's why we're shipping our factories overseas. That's why they're running up the price of your oil and gas and, and electricity. It's to impoverish the American people, to raise your living standards to that of the Bolivian peasant. We want equality for everybody but of the ruling elite. And that, of course, is exactly what Plato wrote about. This trend is accelerating under the NAFTA highway system and is meant to rewild more than half the country. All of these things are designed to bring more and more control to bureaucracies rather than to the independent individual, the sovereign individual of this nation. What brought me into this whole discussion was the fact that while I was doing this multi-million dollar research effort in the 1980s and early 1990s, I became aware of an agenda basically to lock up one half of the United States into wilderness corridors and reserves. It was called the Wildlands Project, but it was also a key cornerstone of the, US, the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity. It was during that study in which I began to realize that this was not an effort to protect the environment, but an effort to control you and I. They were dividing the United States up into little compartments in which they would rip out roads, which they'd rip out whole communities and put them in back in the wilderness. 